Welcome back to a new one on this channel and on this occasion is the arpeggiator. So the ARP device has a new face right now with the Ableton 12 update. So you have the same options. It works the same. It's pretty much the same. Just the scales, maybe they, uh, you have a lot more right here. And that's the only thing that changed from the previous version. Now this ARP, it's pretty complete, but maybe not so easy to understand. If I play something with the default uh, configuration that you get with this uh, ARP MIDI device, I get that. And I'm using, um, you know, organ vibrato uh, preset from analog, from the analog synth, if you want to, if you want to know. So if I play a chord, I just get it. The first option that we need to take a look is going to be the rate. And this one will decide the speed. And you can do it in sync, like I'm doing right now. Or you can go into milliseconds and use milliseconds if you must. But you know, sometimes it's just much better to do it in sync because it's going to sync to whatever it is that you're doing with your DAW. Now, then what you get right here at the top, it's going to be a hold. So if I'm playing an ARP, maybe I'm going to go slower. I hold it. Now, if I release the keys, you know, it's going to keep playing. And all of this just, you know, the basics of the arpeggiator. All right, so as soon as I turn it off, it's going to go off. Now, since this is speeding out notes, the gate is going to decide the length of the notes. If I go down, it's much shorter, and all this depends on what you're using. In this case, uh, my synthesizer, you know, the envelope is pretty big. But if I go up, that is what happens. So you're gonna go up in gate, uh, and when you cross the 100%, some notes are gonna be super long, so you're gonna start overlapping. But you know, all ARPs have uh, the gate control. Just make it shorter, or just make it longer. That's pretty much it. You have the drop down to select the most common styles, right? So uh, you can also do it with the arrows. You can go up and you can go down. And right here, you know, you have the most common uh, ARP styles up, up, and then, then down. And you have up and down, down and up up and down, <laughs> down and up, and then you start getting the weird ones, which are, you know, this is the best part of this, because, you know, we always use the conventional ones, but now you, you can choose some other combinations, and they are all really different. Now, as you keep going on, you, you're gonna get more weird ones, and at some point, you will find the other ones. In this case, it's gonna be play order. If you don't know what play order is, is what we know as, as played. It means that it will remember the order of the notes that you play and it will keep that order and arpeggiate in that very specific order. That's how it works. Now, of course, then you get more and uh, as you keep going on, you get the chord trigger. If I play a chord, this will not play an arpeggiator. It will just, you know, play the chord multiple times. I'm gonna keep moving forward and then you start getting the random ones. Of course, I guess I don't need to explain this. It's gonna be a random, and you know, random. This one is gonna be random ones. And that, uh, you know, those are the styles. I'm gonna go uh, back to maybe the most common one, the up. So up to here, you have the most common controls that you could find on any ARP, but you have a lot more options that are super, super cool. Now, first, it's going to be the offset with the groove included, and then you, you have the repeats. So if I go right here and play something with the offset, you can go into positives. If I go up positives and you can go all the way down to negatives and you can go eight up or you can go uh, eight down. If I double click it, it's gonna go back to the beginning. So when I play a chord, the ARP will always start from the first note that I'm playing, in this case is an F. I guess, you know, that that's fine. Now, if I offset it by one, instead of st starting from the F, it's gonna start from this one, right? From G sharp. But if I keep offsetting, instead of starting from F, it's gonna start from C, which in this case is the last. That's why it starts from the higher one. So you can offset the order. Now, depending, depending on how many uh, keys you're playing, if I keep going up at some point, I'm just back to the beginning. 
And I know that sometimes it sounds louder. I'm going to show you why in a minute. So yeah, you can keep offsetting depending on how many nodes your ARP has. And it's just going to it will start on different places. Then you have the groove and this is just swing. So if I go there, it's normal, but I can do a swing of eight, maybe a swing of 16. And then, you know, we have a swing of 32. And all of this, again, I guess I don't need to explain it. I much prefer to spend uh, time on the other ones. So right now, if I play it, it's going to play as long as I'm playing the keys. When I release the keys, the ARP is going to die. So this is about the repeat. So you can have the arpeggio repeat a certain amount of times. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do four. So I'm gonna do the ARP, the ARP in three, two, one, one, two, three, and then it dies in the four. So I'm still holding the keys. I'm not releasing the keys. So this means the, the repeat, it will take whatever it is that you're doing, and it will repeat it four times, and then it's gonna die. And you can go all the way up to 16, or maybe just, you know, do uh, two repetitions, and it will just repeat it twice. I'm gonna double click to go back to the beginning. The next thing that it's just very interesting, it's going to be the retrigger. Now off, of course, it's just off. I'm gonna make this slower so we can hear the difference. I'm gonna play a chord in three, two, one, and I'm playing a triad. And I know it's super, super slow, but that's, you know, we're gonna be able to hear this. When I play a new note now, while holding a chord, the trigger means what is gonna happen with the existing chord. So if I play a new key, it will not re-trigger and start the ARP from the beginning. Notice that it didn't start from the beginning when adding a note. It's gonna finish the whole cycle and then it's gonna play it and restart. But it, you know, it's just not going back. It's a even, even flow. And then and only then it's gonna do it. So this is what the retrigger can do and by default it's off, but you can select note and you can select beat. If I go to note that now, it means that if I play and play a new note, it will restart it. So if I keep just playing the C, it will never get never get out of the first one, which is the F. It will always re-trigger the ARP. And if of course I'm adding a new key and I press it hold, it's gonna go and do it. So that's gonna be the note. And then you have the beat, and this one is super interesting. All right, so I'm gonna be playing a seventh chord. And you can hear, and yeah, see, of course, I'm playing a seventh. And I'm gonna hold it, so I'm gonna, I can release it. So now, since I'm on beat, what I want to do, I want to go right here and offset it maybe to three and four. Can you hear what's going on? It's not playing the seventh chord, the seventh tone. And this is because we have a certain interval and it will not never let it uh, let the ARP get to the seventh. So as we get to the one, two, three, the fourth will never play and it will re-trigger, which means restart the ARP to the beginning. Now if I disable this and go off, it will play the fourth, uh, the, 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 uh, the seventh tone. So all of this, again, depends on what you want to do. And I'm going to release the hold. Maybe you have something super long and you want to adjust the interval and re-trigger, go back to the beginning, uh, depending on the interval. Well, you know, you can do it. So this re-trigger function is not a very common thing that you could find on any arpeggiator. So it's cool that, you know, you get it on this one. The next thing that we need to discuss, it's going to be about transposing. Usually on an ARP, what you have is an octave mode. You play a chord and it will repeat it uh, one octave up or maybe two up or maybe three or four and so on and on and on. So I'm going to be playing a chord, the same chord I've been playing, but this time I'm going to go in steps. And maybe I'm going to be doing three steps. And notice that when you move it, this one will turn on. And the distance is 12 semitones. So it's going to be an octave. I'm going to be playing it. So what this does is what you know most arpeggiators will do. They will it will take whatever I'm doing and it will repeat it 
maybe in this case three octaves up and it's just gonna loop and cycle through the same arp but it's going up an octave and again this is very you know very common now then you have the distance and right now it's 12 semitones remember an octave up and this is why we are going and it's just repeating it one octave up every single time but I can offset this on most arps you cannot do this I could even go maybe to one semitone and every time I do it it's gonna go up by one so it's repeating my triad on F then it's going to G and then it's going to G sharp G sharp and then A and then going back and this is again pretty unique I want, it can do maybe three semitones and it will do the same thing, but you know, three semitones up in this case. Now maybe it's too slow and it's a little bit too boring. And it's, you know, pretty cool. You cannot do this on other arpeggiators. If I go up, you can do up to eight if you want it to, or even just just one. And just keep going up on the distance, you can go all the way up to 24. All the way down to 24. If I double click, it will go always to the default, which is one octave up. All right. Then you have the root and the scale. So whatever is that you're playing, you can shift it to match whatever is uh, that you're selecting. So I'm going to be playing a C chord. I'm going to get out of chromatic, which is the default mode. And I'm going to turn it into a major. And now I'm playing a minor, but but you know it's doing a major. And it's locked to the root of C, but I, you know, I couldn't change it to something else if I wanted to. Or maybe you can use whatever other scale that you want. And this again is just cool that you can do this. So maybe you are creating something and you made, you know, you made a clip that is just one chord uh, being played throughout the um, on a whole clip or sequence and then you want to try something else, well, you know, you can. You go here and you uh, try some variations. Now, to finish, you have the velocity. And for this one, you need to have a synth that is, uh, you know, responsive to a velocity and, you know, in a controller, of course. So, uh, when I play a chord, I might always get the same. So, I'm going to be playing and I get that. And it's of course the velocity is off, so we are doing nothing right now. Now, I'm gonna be, uh, on my synthesizer, I'm gonna adjust the, the amp of the velocity, so if I play soft, it's gonna be like that. But if I uh, press hard, it's gonna be like that. And I made this on purpose, so you can tell the difference between me playing soft and playing hard. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the velocity and I'm gonna turn it on. The most important values are the target and then the decay. So the job of the velocity is to take the target that you selected right here and then take it to that target. But instead of doing it super fast, it can do it slowly. That's why we have the decay. How long is going to take to go to that target? So I'm going to go to six seconds so we can really hear this. And I want my target to be really, really low, around 30, you know, 35 or 34. Now, if I play really hard, the velocity is going to, you know, you're going to hear that it's super loud and then it's going to take six seconds after we go over the target and then it's going to start bringing it down and match the, match the uh, target, which is 35. I'm going to be playing it in three to one and it's going to be loud. And as I keep holding, it is just fading the volume or the velocity in this case down. So this is what this section does. I play hard, it goes over the target, and it's going to take the target down, and it's going to take this much time to do it. Alright, so that's what it can do. Now if I play a chord, I'm going to play it loud, and then it's going to take it down to match the target. I'm going to be playing a new key now, and I'm going to play it hard. Notice that we, we get loud, super loud, and then of course it will take six, 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 six uh, seconds to go down to the target. But the other ones, the ones I, I was holding, they, they are down. We don't go up uh, in volume or velocity on, the, on those ones. They are down. I'm gonna do it again. And this time, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it slower. I'm 
gonna go right here and make it slower. Maybe that's too slow, but that's fine. I'm gonna play it in three, two, one. Loud. The other ones are soft. And then we keep going down, but it's working only on the one I am adding it. And I'm showing you all of this because all of this got to do with the re-trigger. I'm gonna go down in the times because it's just way too long. And I'm gonna keep it, you know, I'm gonna keep it super low. If I play it for hard right now, it's loud, but you know, quickly, will quickly go down. Now, if I go to re-trigger and I try to do the same thing, make sure that this this one, the re-trigger is off. If I play hard, it's hard. And now I'm gonna be playing a new note. That one is, you know, pretty loud. And then it goes down. So it works pretty much the same, pretty much the same. Now, what happens if I go to this one, the re-trigger, and I turn it to on, just change it to on. I'm gonna be doing the same. It's loud for the chord. I'm gonna add the new key. That is what happens. Everything goes loud. Even the, the, whole, the notes that I was holding, now they go loud when I play a new key. So they're pretty much, it's pretty much re-triggering the whole velo velocity thing. Now I'm gonna maybe go to interval right here and I'm gonna keep the re-trigger, but this time I'm gonna go to beat. On the beat re-trigger, you can make uh, the velocity re-trigger at, at a very specific point. One is one bar. So if I play it, it's gonna go down and then it's just, you know, and I'm not just, I'm not pressing it again. I'm not pressing the keys. After one bar, it will re-trigger and it will go loud again. And then it has to, you know, go down gonna make it faster goes down loud go back loud go back even maybe I can go up and just make it you know maybe two bars now I'm gonna play it loud goes down two bars goes up and then goes down all right so you know a lot of different possibilities uh, with this ARP device Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. It's a pretty simple device, but you can do a lot. And uh, hopefully you learned something new. And if you liked all of this, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to help the channel keep going on, you can. You have links at the description for PayPal, YouTube Thanks, and Patreon. See you on the next one.